This video is going to be a bit different from what I've been doing before. And there's a reason for that. Right now, there's something called Crew AI. Crew AI is a Python framework where you can use agents to do tasks for you. And uh, these agents can do things like trip planning. And these agents coordinate, you give them where you want to go and where you're coming from, and also the vacation time period that you want to go on vacation. And they're going to execute, find the weather, find the best attraction places you should visit, and it's going to generate an itinerary for you all the way up to the dollar amount of the flight tickets and things like that as well. Also like the budget for the entire uh, trip. And I had done this before and I did a very quick screen recording and I posted on, on Twitter and people really enjoyed it. And uh, I did that using Streamlit as the front end because Crew AI uh, at the moment, there's no like straight uh, UI for it that you can use. So I ended up building one with Streamlit. The main issue with that was the agents take a while to run and generate these responses because they have to go back and forth, search, generate, pass it to the LLM, give their responses. And, you know, they're just kind of collaborating to get you the best itinerary as possible, right? But the issue with that was as it was generating and working together, it was generating this kind of like chain of thought. You're seeing what they were talking about, but it was happening in the REPL, which is in the terminal. It wasn't happening on the application. So you as a user, you were blind. You just saw something spinning and you're like, okay, they must be doing something back there, right? They're going to give me my details as soon as possible. But that's not really good user interface. So what I've decided now is I want to add, bring those stuff that's happening in the background in the REPL and bring them into the streaming app so you can actually track and follow what they're doing as they update so that you can, you know, be aware of what they're doing in the background. First of all, I want to give some thanks to Chris Fang. He did implement the callback agent, the Langchain callback agent to Crew AI, which now makes it easy to get the this agent processes that are happening in the background and you can call it and use it in your application. Thank you, Chris. So first of all, let me show you the demo and show you how it works. And then we'll jump into the code and then I can show you exactly how you can implement it within your AI agents with Streamlit. So this is the streaming application that I'm going to demo right now. So this is a vague agent. I, I just named her some random name, right? And I'm just, let's say, we just say, you know, let AI plan your next vacation, blah, blah, blah. Cool. We know that. So on the side here, as you can see, we have where you currently located. So I'm just going to put some random place. So let's do San Mateo, right? And we don't even have to say California. It's going to infer and know where, where we want to go. And so the city where you're interested in vacationing. So here's what, here's something that I want to try a little bit. Yeah. I want to put it my, to my hometown. I was born in Eldoret, Kenya. So let's put Eldoret. Kenya. That way I know, I will know if it's lying or just bullshitting. Right. Um, and that's a good thing to always kind of verify those things. And I'll put the date range at just three, the next three days and see what's happening. And then and let's hit submit. The agent process is starting now. And, uh, this is already showing you exactly what's happening. So right now on the, it's showing you action. Uh, it's using a tool. The first thing is search the internet. And then the tool input is, putting the query into the, into that, uh, internet search, Eldorado, Kenya, weather forecast for that specific amount, that does those specific dates that I'm traveling. And so the first thing it's doing is getting me the weather. So you want to know the weather so you can dress and pack properly. Right? So the log, it says, you know, fast, I need to gather information about the factors that will influence the selection of the city. This includes weather in Eldorado, Kenya, during the travel dates, any cultural season events happening at the same time and the cost of travel from San Mateo to Eldorado. I'll start by researching the weather forecast for Eldorado, Kenya in late March. And then the action is search the internet and then the action input. This is the, this is very important. This is the query that is going to put it into the search uh, to get the results. So it's going to say Eldorado, Kenya weather forecast for March 22nd to 25th of, 20, of 2024. And then the observation, it's already kind of starting right there. So it's doing the first search and it's using AccuWeather as you can see to search the, the weather and you can follow the link here and it will take you to that AccuWeather uh, page for that specific period of time that it's looking for. And then the snippet here is saying, get the monthly weather forecast for Eldorado or Singishu, Kenya, including daily high, low, historical averages, and to, you know, to help you plan ahead for your trip. And it's also going to climate data org and doing the same thing. Um, it's getting the weather averages and you got that already. And then, uh, it's going to weather 25. So you can see it's going through a lot of them to get the averages so it can give you more, more like an accurate assessment of what the weather will be like. And so the next thing it's doing is Eldorado events calendar. And it's going to this website to look for events within Eldorado. And uh, the snippet here is saying explore all the happenings, all, all the happening events in Eldorado in 2024 with us that best suit your interest. Uh, there's theater tickets, comedy festivals, music classes, any or any adventure really. So it's trying to find you the, you know, maximize your fun while you're there. Um, or while I'm there, cause I'm doing this stuff up. Right. And then the other title conferences in Kenya. So it's trying to locate, to get you some conferences some business technology, science, whatever. And then the next one is, uh, endurance races. 
duh, you're in Kenya, so you should be running, right? Essentially. Um, but no, uh, so it's looking at that as well to give you some good events that you might, you know, find really cool. And uh, the other snippet, it's going through upcoming events in Eldorado, Kenya, and it's going through that link. And as you can see, this is just kind of showing you this thought process that's been programming there to, hey, look for this, find this, aggregate, and to, so they can create the ultimate itinerary for you, the best itinerary for you. And then, uh, so there's snippet here, travel tourism, youth conferences, Nairobi, gospel concert, mental health conference, international conference. All right, um, so many things here. And then they also, it also goes to Eldorado Hub, uh, entertainment hub, Facebook. All right, cool. Also going to some of the uh, media outlets. There's a standard media uh, publication there. It's looking for some things they are publishing on there about Eldoret. Um, ASK, that's ASK. That's a showground thing, agricultural. All right. Yeah, it's thinking. It's saying, yeah, maybe I should refine, you know, to get more results. But as you can see, oh, boom, it's done. So first of all, for example, if we didn't have this uh, events happening and showing up on the application, you, you, would just, you probably would have just seen a you know, a spinner spinning on the, on the page and you don't know what's happening really. You're just like, okay, let me just wait. And you could have taken that a long time and uh, you would have waited and, and finally got this, maybe moved out of this page, go to another page, go do something else. But see, I fell for it as well. I was very engaged that I forgot that this thing was running until I just, it just popped up on, on the screen that it finished. Uh, I didn't feel the time going because it, it moves so fast because I'm seeing, I'm interacting, I'm seeing what, it, what it's thinking, what it's doing. But as you can see, it went and found a whole lot of stuff, tickets, flights, everything. And then it aggregated all these results that you're seeing in here. And uh, I put this in a container so that way you can scroll all the way down, all the way up, and you can see what, what it came up with and uh, all the way to the end. So observation, agent, finish, and it's done. And it's giving you all the breakdown. So that is that and uh as you can see i put that in a st status uh and i'll show you the code for that so the st status is basically it updates the status you could before when it was running it was saying something else you're like the agents are at work but now when it's done it says trip plan ready and of course at any point you can just kind of you know so long as you're still within the same page after that specific run you can open here and inspect the steps that it took and make sure that it did the right thing so this is just a working there's definitely there's, there's definitely different things that i could do to improve this but this is a working thing that you can go run with it today and build it yourself. So, and that's the point of this video really is for me to quickly put this out because I've seen the demand that people are asking for this for Streamlit on there, especially in that Discord channel for Crew AI. And so here you can see the full trip here. So here's your trip line and it says, you know, here's your detailed seven day itinerary to Adore Kenya from March 22nd to 25th. And day one, it's breaking down for you, you know, arrival and exploration. I'll arrive at Eldoret, Kenya from San Mateo, check in at Boma in Eldoret. That's a really good hotel, um, no promotion really, but, uh, known for its comfort and excellent service. And then visit Iskon Temple. I've never been there. Um, it's a serene sport for perfect starting a trip on a peaceful note. I guess you gotta pray, you gotta be peaceful, right? You're going for a holiday. Have lunch at the local restaurant and try their pilau. Pilau is, if you have never had pilau, this is your cue. You should find some pilau place. And it's a popular Kenyan dish actually. Uh, spend the afternoon exploring local parks and soaking up the Kenyan sun in the evening. Visit Moibane Road for some shopping. Perfect. Uh, nature. Day two is nature day, right? So day one is arrival. Day two, nature. Day three, fam, uh, family fun and scenic. Rupert Moore's Kids Corner. Let's just go through this. Chip Keith for the waterfall. All right. There's all the pesky tours and travel for thrilling adventure. Enjoy dinner at local restaurants. Okay. So I just want to see instances where he's naming some specific stuff. So um, here's saying visit Rift Valley in the afternoon for an amazing view. Yeah, there's career, uh, career views. It's amazing. You can just see the Rift Valley. Um, yeah, so all this seems pretty accurate to me. And day seven, you're checking out the hotel and departing from Eldoret to San Mateo, you know. And uh, the packing suggestions that it's given us here, consider the weather forecast with temperatures ranging 55 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, potential rain, pack light clothing for warm weather, a good pair of walking shoes, raincoat or umbrella, sun protection like hats, sunscreen, a camera, essentials like toiletries, medication. Okay, so breakdown, flight cost, 1,413. That's pretty standard. It's pretty accurate. All right. Accommodation, Bomain for seven nights, uh, 700 bucks. Yeah, pretty much accurate right there. About hundred bucks a day. Yeah. And then meals per day uh, for seven days, 676. Man, that must be some nice meals. That's a bit expensive for Kenya. But anyway, you, you're in Bomain, so it makes sense. Hey, um, and inflation too. So I haven't been there in a while. But activities and shopping, 250. Yeah, so you probably want to buy it some uh, some of those ornaments, uh, carvings and wrist uh, stuff. But anyway, 
So the total for your budget here is saying uh, $3,039.52 all the way to the cents. Come on. But anyway, <laughs> that's pretty good. Like you can see, this is a good rubric. It's not like the perfect itinerary that you can ever find out there probably, but it's a good starting point, right? It gives you ideas of what you might maybe should consider. And then uh, at the end it says, you know, enjoy your trip. Uh, it's a rich, it's a city rich in culture and scenic beauty, and uh, this itinerary ensures that you experience it all. Um, I don't know if it mentioned, it didn't mention anything about running. Probably did, probably somewhere in there. But anyway, the main piece that I really wanted to show you today was this part, because I know a lot of people struggle trying to implement this. So I want to show you the code now, how you can do this, this magic right here. It's not really magic at this point, but uh, show you how this you can implement this part. So let's get to the code. All right, so. This is the code that I implemented. So like I, like I mentioned to you, right? Uh, Chris Pang did uh, submit the changes that was needed uh, to do the callback onto the crew AI, uh, especially when the latest, that was merged in the latest release, if I'm not wrong. So on the latest release, it should have that taken care of. And we can just take a look at it real quick. So if you go to the agents, he did implement that. So he added this base callback handler from Langchain uh, that you can use from Langchain uh, to send those messages to the front so the application can, uh, you can use it however you want on the application. And so he added that and he added a bunch of other stuff in here as well. Um, not, it's not too much, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good amount to make it work. And that's the thing, you want a working uh, app in, in this case. So again, thank you, Chris. And so you don't need to worry about this part. The part that you are interested in and probably watching this video for is how do I implement it within my app? And the biggest part that where you want to implement this is within trip agents. So within your trip agents, you have to create a callback handler right here. So I used a stream it callback. I just named it. I just named it stream it callback and you can name it whatever you want to name it. Right. And so within this trip agents, this is where you're lining up all your agents. You have a city selection agent, you have local export, you have a travel concierge, and all these agents you can imagine as these are different individual people. Think of them as people, right? You have a travel concierge, this is a, the expert in concierge, for example, for Eldorit, for example, right? And then you have another uh, city selection agent. This person is like, the role is a city selection expert. and their goal is to select the best city based on weather, season, and prices. And uh, the backstory, an expert in analyzing travel data to pick ideal destinations. That's their job. They're supposed to analyze data and pick the ideal destination for you. And they have some tools that they can use to do that, right? Because they're agents, they're not humans. So you give them a search tool, and that's for searching the internet. For them to go to the internet, get you know search what they need, get that information, synthesize it, and use it on the next uh, phase of it. And then they also have browser tools to scrape and summarize websites. So they can scrape, summarize some websites to get the data for you. Because uh, the important thing is data here. And verbose true, and we're doing step callback, and we're calling that stream it callback handler. And this is the important piece. So I have this stream it callback handler, right? And what I'm doing here, I'm passing it. Uh, this function is going to take the step output, and the step output is going to come from uh, whatever the agents are working on and the results that are streaming in uh, or the interactions, what's happening in the background, really. So what we're doing here, once we get that, uh, we're iterating through that, whatever the agent is saying or thinking or uh, information that they're gathering. We're iterating through all those outputs that's coming in from the agent. And uh, we find the tuple, this might come as a tuple. So we find a step. And uh, if, if it's a tuple, um, we split into action and observation. and for that. And then if the instance of action, the action that it's trying to take, if it's a dictionary and uh, there's a tool within that dictionary as well. And uh, also uh, if there's a tool input and there's log, those are like, it's a dictionary and those are within that dictionary. What you want to do, you want to pull out the, or grab the action. And within that action, you get the tool. Uh, so first of all, so, so in this case, if the instance uh, action is a dictionary, you want to get tool, tool input, and log from that dictionary. And then basically we're taking everything from that dictionary, we're taking the key, and then we're matching with the value and displaying it on the screen, basically. So we'll take the, for example here, the tool, and we'll add that with, uh, or concatenate that with the um, action of that tool. So in this case, for example, you know, you have action, if it's action, uh, we get uh, the search internet and that's a tool, right? We get the search, search the internet and then 
just like that to make it look like almost close enough to this so that way you can read as a human because if we don't parse it like this the output that we're getting from these agents it's going to look very jumbled up and you can't read it it's just a whole bunch of uh dictionaries and everything's just everywhere it's really hard to read when it's coming on the screen and you want something a bit legible that you can read your eyes can follow pretty well so this is what i'm doing basically in all this i'm just kind of passing through or parsing through that uh data that we're getting from the from the agent steps and we're just going to go in through it and organizing it in a way that it's readable uh, and as you saw in that application that we just ran uh, it's more readable you can follow along with it and this is basically what i'm doing with all this uh, all the way down here and uh, once this is done um, i'm using that streaming callback within this each agent i'm just passing that to each agent so that each agent has it and that's all you're doing within this trip agents file and then i'm saving that and then when we go to the main application which is streamlit app you don't really have to add anything here because you already imported the trip agents and you've already imported uh, trip tasks. So within trip agents, you've imported everything and it's going to include all this stuff that we've uh, we've added here, the callback handler. And so the next thing you want to do, you come down here. Uh, what I did down here, the only thing that changed here uh, on if submitted, what I'm doing is I'm using the ST status and ST status basically is that tab is showing you, hey, agents are running. And so, you know, and it's showing the status running and it's expanded. So that way the, it, it stays expanded while the agent is still working through it. And um, as well, I'm just uh, passing that as status so that I can use it down here again. When it's done, I'm just using it down here as SD status. I want to update now the, the, status, con uh, the status itself because um, it went from agents are working. I want to update it to trip plan ready. So when it ends, it shows that check mark and it shows trip plan ready and it's complete. And also the status container since it was open when it was running when it's done it's closed so here expanded is equals to false so it closes that so it's closed and you see what you actually what your itinerary looks like because you don't want to see all that at least for now but if you want to do it you click on it and you can scroll through it and see all the uh chain of thought what was happening underneath and so in this trip crew i'm um, just padding, passing in the location city date range and interest uh which was from the application itself when you're filling in uh the location where you are and the cities where you're going and also the date range that you want to visit and also your interest probably you, maybe you like snorkeling swimming and it's going to consider that and also search for those so you might you want to keep that in mind because that might take it a, a little more longer for the agent to finish running and so there's a result so once that's finished running you just kind of basically running this and instantiating you you know you're passing once you pass in those uh values in there what you're passing it into you're running it and once that's finished it updates the container and it says hey it's ready to go and it creates a subheader say hey, here's your trip plan and it shows uh your results here so finally in markdown and so that's the quick dirty way for you to implement this within uh some of the agents you're building especially if you're using streamlit and i highly encourage you to use streamlit i also want to say i've seen a lot of folks there uh, asking for things like hey how do i include human feedback into my streamlit application for example right like the agents are working on i add human input uh but then streamlit kind of does this thing that you know you interact with any widget within the application it's going to rerun it from top to bottom each time so i'm still looking on a way to help resolve that so stay tuned if i find something uh that works really well i will definitely share that uh with an, uh in another video so this is your cue subscribe and stay tuned for more i just wanted to get something real quick out for you to start working on it and so with that said i'm going to share the link to my github repo where all this code is going to be um the code that i implemented is going to be hosted and you can fork it clone it i don't know uh have any if you have any issues create an issue there and I'll definitely try to address it uh, for you as well. And uh, with that, you know, hack around, let me know what you think about it, um, create something, share it with me and uh, I'll be happy to promote it as well uh, within my socials. So yeah, that's all I wanted to share today. And uh, don't forget to subscribe though. See you around. Bye.